Hi everybody, it's me. It's Grace here. It's Tuesday night, late night crafting. We're going to be covering some library books tonight. I might do two. I think I'm going to try to do two of these books. Um, these are books that I get from my local libraries, semi-annual sale and fundraiser. So I have a couple of them here. I've already taken the covers off. Um, I just got some new decoupage queen paper in. And so I wanted to take a look because these, there are quite a few that are Christmas themed. And I thought maybe one of these would work for one of these books. So anyway, that's what we're doing tonight. Um, say hello when you come on. Let's see. I wonder if I shouldn't make a change to, no, I want you to see both screens because I want you to see the table so you can see the papers. Um, so let me just make sure this feed is coming through on Facebook before I go much further, because if it's not, that would be problematic. Nope. It's coming through loud and clear. All right. Awesome. We're ready to go working on a couple of altered books. So I have a couple of things to tell. Well, just one thing I really want to note for you guys is that in the next couple of weeks, um, late night crafting is generally on Tuesday nights at nine, but because of my son's wrestling schedule, it will be changed up in the next couple of months. It'll sometimes still be on Tuesday at nine, but sometimes it won't be. So stay tuned here on the page. Make sure you're on the Telegram channel. Um, that way you're getting notifications when the lives are. I have created a few events for the next couple of weeks for the lives. So you know exactly when they're coming. Hey, Jeannie. Hello. Hello from Arizona. Welcome. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you so much. Okay. So I know so much going on tonight. Let's see. Make sure you guys can see the screen. Let's take a look at some of these papers. Um, and let me know if anybody's crafting lately or crafting tonight, let me know. I went to, we went to Gannon's band concert tonight and, um, the family that we sat next to the woman was telling me she was going home to wrap presents tonight. Look, I haven't even started shopping. <laughs> I mean, I think I have one or two things, but no, really, I have so much work to do. You guys, Hey, Kimberly Buck. Hello. Hello. Um, I just want to, I just want to forget about the shopping. Can we just forget about shopping and craft instead, please? Someone give me permission. Someone give me permission. I love this set. It's beautiful. Not, it's not the right shape or size for a book cover, but, um, I thought I would just take a look at these because something that would fit on a book cover, these are, these are new papers to, to the shop. Some of them are brand new even to you. Some of them are restocks because we've been running low on some of these papers. Like we ran, uh, this is new. I didn't, I don't think I had this one, the shabby Christmas four pack, but now I will. It has the shabby Santa, the shabby angel. Um, so now we'll have this one in the shop. That will be new to the shop. Um, this one's sold out already, so we've got more of these in. If you were looking for these and it's sold out, um, let's see. This sold out already. This would make a great book cover, um, but I'm not going to use this. I have another one in mind, the birds. Um, let's see. Lots of papers here. Let's see. Let's see. Um, there was another one. This I'm going to pull out just because it has some fantastic words on it. And I thought maybe we would want to use one of those on the front. So let's pull just one of those out. I have something else pulled out already that I think I like. Um, the truck was running out of stock, the vintage Christmas truck. So I got more of those in stock. Yay, that's exciting. We're doing just a quick check on our stock. And um, there is a new paper. This one, this is the one I'm going to use on one of the books. Look at this. Look at how pretty with the stars and the bells and the cranberries and pine cones. It's got a fireplace and a stack of presents. I love this. That we're going to put on one of the books. And then what's the last thing under here? This is a new paper to the Comfy Nest as well. Uh, naturalist library. I don't think I have this one. Oh, these papers are really fun to work with when you're dealing with lots of them at once. <laughs> All right. Look at that. Was, I was being sarcastic right there. Okay. Is that beautiful? Again, not book worthy, but I have one, this one that is perfect for one of these books. I had, I, I was planning on using some tissue paper in a printout 
And um, then the papers came in the mail and I was making dinner and was opening the package like, oh my gosh, these are my papers that came in. And I was thinking, there's got to be one in here that we could use. So I was originally going to do one book, but let's get two done. Since we have them, let's get two done. Okay, so I've already, so I'm going to do two of them. I've already painted this one and this is drying right now. So I'm going to put this aside and we're going to paint this one. Um, this is like a standard book size, which are great for those A4 papers because they just wrap around the book so well. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of comments. I'm just going to check on Facebook real quick and see if maybe I can see more. Yes, there are a ton of comments on Facebook. I am not seeing them all, though. On Oh, Maureen, she says, I love rice paper. Janice loving the bird one. Now I can see your comments. I couldn't see them on the StreamYard app. What's up with that? Come on, StreamYard, catch up. Let me just check something. Is there anything I can do? differently like if I change a setting would it help at all let's put this on there and just see if it like kick starts this hmm let's see let's see um the other thing is I could make no I want it the other way I want this one big yeah like that so you guys can see the project bigger than me but you can still see me I'm still here I'm still here I I think I need to read the comments from Hello, Anne Marie. I see you guys now. Marsha and Tamara's here. Hello, hello. I can't see these comments. It's the wildest thing. For some reason, they're not showing me on StreamYard. It's always something, girls. It's always something. All right. So here we go. Um, I had originally picked. Well, I can talk to you about that later. Let's get the let's get this painted. So these had major stickers on them, like. So the covers of the books were taped, it's not stickers, taped into place with this like massive tape that over the years has kind of like really stuck on the inside of the book. So I'm going to have to cover the inside of the book to get rid of these marks. Um, it's on both the front and the back. So that's okay because I, I can, we can handle that. And this one it wasn't as bad, I don't think. This one's still wet. I better be careful. Yeah, this one didn't have the same issue, but this book did. So every book gets its own special treatment based on what it needs. Um, so let's get the outside of this one painted. And I'm just painting it with white, you guys, um, because I want the papers to show up brightly. When we, when we put the papers on we want them to show up really well so we need just a, a really quick coat of white it doesn't even have to be perfect we just need to get on and i'm using this because i dislike this paint so much <laughs> it's like let's get it used up number one i don't like the sheen like it has like a kind of a shiny aspect to it and i'm not a fan of that for most of my projects i want matte but this will be just fine for covering up this blue so that we have a white a white background that we're working with. So let's get this paint pushed all around. Um, do you need to go to Facebook? I don't know what you mean, Jeannie. Where are you watching me from? <laughs> Where are you watching me from? Are you on YouTube watching? You don't have to go to Facebook. Not at all. You can, you can go wherever you want. I'm on Facebook and I'm also on um, YouTube. So you should be able to see me live in both places which is so nice to be able to do that. Share with both communities and both places. All right, it's funny. This book has a different cover. It's more fabric um, and the other one wasn't. It's, it's not the same material. So I'm curious to see. I think the paint is actually easier to put on the fabric than it was on the other one. It's just soaking right into the fabric. Okay, we got to make sure we hit this right here. We don't want to miss this edge. I'm really pushing, pushing, pushing that paint into the fabric cover. And I don't care if there are brush strokes. I just want to make it white so that the blue isn't showing through my papers when I put them down. Because, you know, decoupage papers, tissue papers, they're so thin. Um, they're, they're really transparent when they get wet. 
so we don't want blue showing through. So I'm going to hit these edges while I'm at it. Let me check some more comments. So you sprinkled Sybil, thank you for being such a friend. Thank you for sharing and being such a supporter. I appreciate you so much. Speaking of supporter, Jeannie Clifton, I see your little, your little teal heart next to your name. Thanks for supporting the page. Anybody who has that teal heart, hello, hello to you. Yeah, Jeannie, she said, I got my book today. It's lovely. I'm excited to start on the inside. Ooh, yay, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for you. It's beautiful the book that the one that we got so beautiful if so what she means by sprinkling if those of you who, who aren't aware or you're not sure what that term means I've had people ask me what it, how do I sprinkle what does that mean it just means you use that share button uh, Facebook doesn't like us using that word a whole lot so we try to avoid it and we say things like spread the love spread the blessing spread the joy sprinkle this out there during the Christmas event I was saying toss the tinsel <laughs> they all mean the same thing. If you if you are liking what you see and you think you know someone who might also like this project, the idea of it, the inspiration behind it, sprinkle it out there. Sprinkle it. So appreciate it. Oh, Kimberly saying fluff the nest. That's another way we say it. So thank you, Joyce and Sybil and Kim. All of you fluff in the nest. I appreciate y'all so much. Um, I think I have to keep going back and forth between the two to see all your comments. How crazy is that? So strange. Yeah, you can see my little ticker down on the bottom saying, be a love, share. Yeah, it's StreamYard's nice. It gives you the opportunity to kind of put these special messages or notices if you want to on your project. I'm going to spray this with just a, on a tight on your broadcast, I should say, a tiny bit of water. I just want to, it'll help this paint spread. It'll take a minute more to dry, but it might be worth it to get that paint to spread. As you know, as you can see, this paint is really thick. It's really thick. This paint would be really good for stenciling, except I don't like the shine that it leaves. I might not need that much more paint, actually. I have this little corner to do and then just the edges. So the band concert was good, you guys. It's um, jazz band and concert band. Gannon, my, Landon's not in either one anymore. Broke my little mama heart because he had to leave both because of his academic schedule and the way the class times were. Couldn't do it. But Gannon, Gannon left concert band, but he, so no, no more saxophone for him. It just breaks my heart. But he's still playing piano in the jazz band. So, um they do such a good job. Mr. Street. I'm always so impressed, Mr. Street, with what you do at the high school with these kids in such a short amount of time. So many instruments, so many kids to teach. It's unbelievable, actually, what music teachers can do. Okay, it's on there. It's not perfect, as you can see. We get a little dark spot right here. I might try to get this to even out a little bit more. That needs to dry. Um, more white on here that I could spread, but let's just get that in the water. I'm ambitious tonight. We're going to try to do two books. We'll see what, how, how far we get. Hey, Luann. Oh, thanks, Joyce. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate you too. Hey, Pat, I see you. You have a hearts party going on. Say what, girlfriend? Spreading the hearts, just spreading the love, spreading the, sh she's sharing it out there. I love it. What is, I, I just, it's so weird how this is coming through for me, you guys, tonight. So I am seeing, I'm going to try to unpin this comment and see if I can see more of you. <laughs> Mary says, hashtag fluff the nest. <laughs> I love that. Very cute, Mary Lonovic. Hey, Lindsay, I see you. Oh, Sybil, thank you for saying that. All right. I just want to make sure. Hey, Rita, I see you. Katana's here. Oh, yes. Now I see you, girls. Uh, Anne Marie says, so happy I got you. I got the restock of these. Are they in the shop now? No, I haven't put them in yet. I just got them tonight. So I have to get my inventory updated in the shop. So I will by tomorrow, Anne Marie. You'll see them by tomorrow morning. Well, Maxine says, something is muted. What's muted, my dear? 
I wonder what she's what she means. Hey, Kathy Popham, how are you? New Craft Therapy Club friend. Hey, Kimberly Holloway from South Carolina. Welcome, welcome. We're so appreciate that you're here. Now you can see all the comments. Jeannie, you, were you over on YouTube before? She said, well, I, I'm over now. I'm on Facebook and I can see all the comments. Well, that's good. That's good. It must be a YouTube thing tonight. I'm going to grab my chair. Okay, so I think that this one is probably closer to dry. I'll show you some of the papers that I've pulled. I wanted to use this section right here is a little thick. I wanted to use, we're going to hit this with some air. I was going to use um, tissue paper. And it's the same tissue paper. If you're ordering from me and I have to wrap something, I've been wrapping it in this beautiful poinsettia tissue paper. So don't throw it out because you can use it on a project to cover something if you'd like. Um, so let me grab it and show it to you. I have this set aside because that's just beautiful. Um, there are some really beautiful phrases. I don't know. Maybe we'll end up using one of those. I'm not sure because we're going to have to see what kind of paper we end up with. I had originally printed this out. This was a printable that I purchased and I printed this out thinking I could use that with the tissue paper. Now I have a big stack of stuff here. So let's, let's just see if it falls crash boom bang. So this is the tissue paper. If you place an order from me, you're going to get, if it's neat, something needs to be wrapped. This is the tissue paper I've been using and it's really quite pretty. The green is a really soft green. Um, and the red is really vibrant for these poinsettias. And I was going to put the background in that and then float him on the cover of the book uh, with some torn paper, I believe. So this was the idea for one of the books. And then, I, yeah, this might, I might be able to pull one of these phrases. He, it already has Merry Christmas here. We'll just see how, you know, how I end up tearing that paper out for the cover of the book. So this was one book. And then the other book, this is going to fit perfectly on it. It's just so pretty. Wishing you, wishing all Merry Christmas, it says here in handwriting. Uh, East First Street. <laughs> There's an address here, Mrs. Something and Family. So anyway, this is one of the new rice papers that will cover beautifully. Hey, Lori Elliott. Pamela, you're enjoying it. Well, good. I'm so glad. I hope it inspires you to try your own. Hey, Maureen. I know that's a pretty Santa, right? I'm a huge fan of vintage Santas. Mary says, we're going to San Antonio in December to see our grandson play his trumpet in the mariachi band. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Hey, Deborah Bolts. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. I love band, you guys. I just love it so much. You know what? This is still tacky because it's so thick right here. So let's just hit these both with a little bit of heat and air to get them to dry. And then we're going to cover these up. I think tonight I got to pick my decoupage glue. Uh, do you have a favorite decoupage glue that you use? Just shout it out in the comments. What's your favorite? I know, perfect for the cover, right, Marie? So actually, one of the books I wasn't even going to use tonight, I decided, okay, instead of doing two, I'll just do the one with the tissue paper and the, the printed Santa. And the reason I had pulled out this book first, and it has the yellow on the inside. I'm like, well, yellow's not going to match with my poinsettia paper. So I was steering away from this one. I said, okay, we'll just do one tonight. We'll just do this book because it has a, a white inside. It's just like a creamy white perfect for my tissue paper and my old-fashioned Santa. It'll match perfectly. Well, then this paper came in while I was making dinner and it has the yellow stars and the yellow bells. And I thought, perfect for my yellow insert in there. So we're back to doing two. See how, see how easy it is for me to change my mind? Okay, that one's still drying. We can start getting this one together. Um, I have to make sure that I have the top, the front of this book, so that on the front, I put the right thing. Well, at first, we're just going to cover it with tissue paper. And I don't need a thick decoupage glue for this because the tissue paper is thin. Um, so I can use, I'll probably use my Pentart brand one. I would love to know if, um, 
Okay, so Marsha uses the Liquitex medium. That's the other one I could use tonight, Marsha. That was the one I was thinking. That's the one I was thinking, but I might just grab my pen dart. Um, Missy, <laughs> you're loving the StreamYard platform. She said, can I just say how much I love this platform? The StreamYard, see, it's so nice to be able to see me and the Project Lily thing, right? All right, I'm gonna roll away for a minute, girls. I'm gonna roll away. I'm gonna grab, I think I want Matt. I always, <laughs> I did a little, um, I did a little a survey in the napkin. I think it was in the Napkin Lovers Club, wasn't it, girls? And I said, are you, yes, it was in the Napkin Lovers Club. And I said, are you on team Glossy or team Matt? When you reach for a supply, whether it be a paint, a spray, a marker, most of them come in different finishes, glossy and matte. And I asked, what team are you on? And the majority of people say, team, team, team matte. What team are you on? Do you prefer matte or glossy? Lori likes this. She said, yes, I also like this new setup. Marsha, you haven't used your pen dart yet? I'm going to use mine tonight. I'm going to use mine tonight. I love I love to chat with you guys so much. I love it so much. It's so fun to see all the comments and chat with you. All right, so let me check here. I'm gonna just make sure I'm not missing anybody on the other side. Okay, yep. Yeah, no, I think everybody moved over. Joy said she usually uses matte. Diane uses matte. Oh, look at. Anne Marie uses matte, Christy and Judy and Marsha uses matte, but Katana, Katana likes the glossy. I like both. Babs likes matte. We have 13 high schools in our county and every year they put on a free showcase where I can see all 13 bands do their field shows. Wow, Holly, that is something I would totally enjoy. I gotta get a paintbrush, girls. I'm scooting over to get myself a brush. Wowzer, that would be fun. What a, like a huge, awesome benefit that your high schools put that, like they put it all on together. Mary says, my friend and I like to go to the high school band concerts when we know about them because we feel there should be as many people attending the band concerts as attend football games. Support the arts. Hashtag support the arts. Yes. Yes, 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 Mary. Girlfriend, I love that so much. Oh, I love that comment so much. You guys are blessed. You're like just a blessing to those kids and families and to the teachers because they do, they do deserve the support just as much as any sports team, any activity. They, do, they work hard. All right. We're going to try to get a gloppy coverage here. <laughs> I have such technical art terms, you guys. Gloppy. We're going to glop this on. I'm going to, I'm running out of this bottle. So if this runs out, I'm going to have to move to a new, I don't think I have, I mean, I have another bottle in my inventory in my office for filling orders. I could grab one from there, but not here in my craft room. I'm going to go to the big bottle next time. This is the small bottle. I also have the big bottle in my shop and the next one that I open is going to be a big bottle because I use it often enough now. Okay. I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to move it down. So it's like, it's going to wrap around. I have plenty of it. So I'm going to, I think I'll end up, how am I going to do this? I think I'll end up um, sanding off the edges. So this tissue paper is nice and um, sturdy. You know, it's, it's, it's not like incredibly, incredibly thin and fragile like some tissue papers. This is the tissue paper. Like I said, if you ordered for me and you order like the glue, sometimes I wrap it in, a, in this tissue paper. Right now, this tissue paper because the holidays are coming. So save it. They need decorative tissue papers because then you can use it <laughs> on a project. I could technically cut. Oh, good gravy. I could technically cut most of this off so that I'm not having to, let me move my chair back so I have a little more room. Because it's such a big piece, I'm going to cut it in half. You can't even see me, I'm off screen. 
and I'm trying to cut it down so I'm not dealing with this big piece of paper while I'm trying to decorate. You get this will get saved for something else. No worries there. Nothing will go to waste. You know me. Nothing will go to waste. Now I don't have to deal with such a big piece. Even this, I could cut it down because I'm only going to need that much of it. So let's cut this down. Now it'll be much easier for you to see it and for me to manage it. Okay. And this doesn't even matter if it's even straight because it's one big pattern and it's all willy nilly. Um, so it doesn't really matter as much as the other paper with the bird. It's going to matter if it's straight. This one's not going to be so, um, so much pressure about being straight with a patterned paper. And then we're going to put on top of this, we're going to put Santa, that Santa printout that I have. So let's wrap this around, pressing it in. And then I really want to focus on these grooves, like these grooves that are here where the, where the um, binding is for the book, you want to make sure, and I'm not putting a ton of pressure. I just want to put my finger in there and make sure that it settles into that groove really well. And then I, I do usually do this in bits, right? So now I can I can peel this back and I can see what's not glued. And I'm going to push this glue up underneath here. I want to make sure it all gets glued down. A little, a little uh, fold right there that I don't want. And I usually miss an edge somewhere. <laughs> it's inevitable. I will miss an edge somewhere and I'll have to go back and add more glue, but it's okay. It always works out. You want it thick enough so that it's going to hold your paper, but not so thick that it's leaving bumps, right? Like you don't want to have um, like mounds of glue, just enough so that it holds it down. And then I'm going to pick it up once and I'll pick it up from the inside and I'm going to open it and close it a couple of times to make sure that that paper is really glued down on the bindings very well. It looks like up here I need a little bit more glue. It's just kind of bubbling up right there. So here, this is all excess. Let me just check my edges. Yep, see, I missed this one little corner, of course. And then oh, oh that's good. That one's good. Missed a corner. I always miss. Look, one just one little stubborn little corner. Now my, my, my paper is starting to feel moist or damp. I hate that word, you guys. Starting to feel damp because it's taken on the glue from underneath. So the top of it is actually feels tacky. Um, so be careful because once it starts taking on that glue to the point where you feel it on the other side, even by touching it, if the glue is thick enough and it sticks to your hand, it will pull up your paper. And we don't want that. We don't want that. I do need to put a coat of this on the outside as well to kind of seal it in. So I'm going to do one side at a time because I can't really put it down to dry if I do both at the same time. Not easily anyway. So let's get this part done. And I'm doing this before I sand it off. I'm not sanding off the edges until I get this top part sealed in. I just think it hardens these edges and really seals it in place. So there's, there's less of a chance that you're going to rip the paper when you're sanding it off. I'm going to put this down so I have some leverage here with my brush. I need to push down and apply some pressure there. This is their mat. 
Pentart. I sell this in the store. Pentart um, decoupage varnish and glue. So it goes on both the top and it can be the glue. I'm going to put this one aside and we'll get going with the other guy. He should be ready. I'll let that one sit there and dry. Almost ready. It's a little bit tacky. Oh, check comments. It is pretty. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Bits and bobs. <laughs> that goes in my bits and bobs basket. You know, I have such such technical terms for everything. <laughs> you guys know me so well. Oh, goodness. Maureen says, I've been working on my little house journal all evening. <gasps> Maureen, I'm so glad you're loving them. We're doing little um, house-shaped journals in the Craft Therapy Club, and they are Christmas. Well, mine are anyway. I told them they can do theirs, whatever theme they want. Mine happens to be Christmassy winter themes. This is going to fit so perfectly on here. Um, I'm going to release the edges, even though I think it's going to fit real well. I think I'm going to have a little bit of a torn edge look right around the edges of this. So let me put this aside and just grab um, one of my watercolor brushes. Put some water in them in it so that I can tear away the white. I don't want this white on here. Um, I think I have a little, this is from the YouTube that I did yesterday. It's still on my desk. My pen is running out of water in the barrel. So I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Any brush that you have, just wet the edges so that we can then tear away it's not wet enough, it's not going to tear easily. And that's what we want is for it to tear easily. But to give like this nice torn look to the edges, I want to get rid of the white and have a, a nice natural torn look. I'm going to grab my pencil eraser because it just does make it easy for me to tear this away. And I'll hold it up and show you kind of the result of doing it this way. I didn't go around the whole thing. It will dry before you get to the end. So just do one side at a time. If I had wet the whole thing around, by the time I get to the end with the tearing part, it'll dry and I'll have to re-wet it anyway. So it's okay. Just do one section at a time. I'm using the eraser to tear the paper away. And we'll come around on all these edges and do this. Any paintbrush, any water will work. Let me check the comments. Hey, Janice, how are you? Joy says, I'm so glad you're doing Christmas books. I've been in a Christmas mode. I've been in a Christmas mode. We've been doing Christmas books in the craft therapy club and we're doing Christmas trees on Sunday. We're doing a Zoom party, Zoom craft party, and we're doing paper Christmas trees. The ones they are behind me. I'm not sure that you can see them, but they are behind me. I have a few versions of that that we're going to do on Sunday. So I am in Christmas mode for sure. For sure. There's a little bit of white left here that I want to get off. This is rice paper, Lynn, and you'll be able to get this rice paper on my site tomorrow, the company nestwithgrace.com. Um, this one just came in tonight. I have dozens of rice papers available on the site. This one just happens to be new in stock today. And I just thought I'm going to use this one for my book tonight because it's just perfect. The size and shape of it is just perfect for my book cover. So, yes, it's a rice paper. I'm a retailer for Decoupage Queen, and this is one of their papers. One of their Christmas designs. It's a beautiful collage. I hope you like it. Oh, Joy, don't feel that way, honey. It's kind of the season. I've had a couple of people say that to me recently. I'm so behind on getting projects, my craft projects done. Well, it's kind of that season. We're trying to get the decorating done. We're trying to get the shopping done. We're trying to get cards, you know, the photos for the cards or the cards ordered or made up or sent out. I mean, it's just, we still have to do Thanksgiving in between. I mean, we still are, we can't just skip Thanksgiving. But there's so much prep for mamas to do, it seems, for, for Christmas. And 
I think everybody's going to be feeling a little bit of that strain of things are falling. My own stuff is kind of falling behind. That's what it is to be, you know, the mama, the grandma, the wife, the sister, the daughter, taking care of parents. I mean, there's just so much. There's just so much on our plates. So don't, don't beat yourself up, guys. Your projects will still be there. We will still be there for you. When, when the holidays are all said and done, we will still be there for each other and we'll still be able to create and craft. So no pressure, my dear. Actually, Shauna, I was feeling really good. And then tonight I feel like, oh no, is my, is my head cold coming back? I'm starting to get a headache again. A couple of hours ago. I won't, I won't blame, I won't blame the band concert. <laughs> I loved the band's concert. But yeah, I'm starting to feel icky again. I'm checking comments, girls. Hey, Linda, I see you, Linda Mazziano. Thank you for being a Facebook subscriber and supporting the page. And thanks for sprinkling the love. You do love the paper. Why, thank you, Lynn. Thanks for being a supporter. There's Pat Johnson. She says, hello from cold West Fargo, North Dakota, visiting my sister, heading for home in South Central Illinois. Well, welcome to the great state of North Dakota. I hope you're having a fantastic visit with your sister. And it is cold, friend. It is cold. My sister lives in um, Fort Myers, Cape Coral area. And she, we grew up in Boston. So she, she went home for a little visit in Boston because she was a little bit, a little bit overwhelmed by all the storm damage and you know, what's been happening with the repair from the storm and all that. So she said, I'm just going to take a little trip and see family. So she took a trip um, up to Boston to visit. And she said, I'm going to freeze. <laughs> She's used to the Florida weather now. She lives down there year round. Look at you guys, how perfectly that fits. Are you kidding me with that? Now, interestingly, I knew that this little bit of, of book cover, the one that's underneath, I knew that this was going to be hanging out a little bit and it's blue cover with white on top. And so I wanted to see this on here because we've got blues down in here on the page. I don't mind it whatsoever. I think I'm going to go with it. So I wanted to be, I'm a super visual person. So I wanted to see it on the, on the book before I decided, do I need to come in? It, you know, this is personal preference. Do I need to, do I want to come in? And this is going to be hard to get up again. I have like no nails. Uh, come on. Hold on girls. I want to pull this up, but I don't want to rip the paper. Get my little silicone tool. I wondered if I was going to want to paint this like this creamy color, this tan creamy color that's in the background, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is because actually the lighter color, it is really framing the paper so beautifully and the blue that you can see that was the, the cover. It's like still on the inside and that blue really complements what's on my paper because we have these little blue presents and papers. So I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is. This is going to get glued down right like that. And it is important that this one has to be straight. <laughs> this one, it didn't matter because it's all one big pattern. There's no up or down. Doesn't really matter. This one, we have got to get this one straight. So I want to make sure that my, I like my placement before I go gluing anything down. I'm going to start gluing it just like this because it's right where, oh, look at the bubble. Let's make sure that it's right where I want it to be before we start gluing it. I'm going to grab, oh, I might have enough of this. Let's just use it. I think I might have enough. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> I like the lighter blue edge too, Jeannie. I'm glad that you said that. It kind of affirms my choice. So thank you for telling me that. Hello, Shauna from Fraps and Scraps. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Oh, Stephanie, thank you for telling me that. Lynn's really loving this paper. Isn't it beautiful? Wait a minute. I was supposed to put this one on the book with the yellow. I do this all the time. Oh no, here's the yellow. Phew. I wanted this one 
with the book with the yellow because of the yellow stars, the yellow bells. I thought that that would match better. I'm, I generally, when I do these books, you guys, they're altered library books and you guys have been loving when I put these up in my live sale and my auction, you guys have been loving the library books. So I leave the library stuff intact. You could pull it out, but I love the nostalgia of it. I love the history of the book and when it's been taken out, I love that it's still here. So I leave it. Um, and the yellow was throwing me off because I thought Christmas red and green, but this paper has the yellow ornaments, their star ornaments, and the yellow bell, the two bells here, and more stars over here. So I'm really thrilled. And then this, it's like a little note card that's wrapped. Like looks looks, looks like little Christmas cards that have been wrapped in string with little berries over the top. Maybe it's a present, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's perfect. It's the perfect for it. Okay, let's start gluing. I'm going to, the placement is right. So I'm just gonna, it's stuck because that stinking glossy, the glossy um, paint, it's, it's sticky. It takes a while to cure glossy paint. It takes longer to cure than, uh, than matte paints. So it's a little bit tacky still the white paint. So that's why my paper was, you, you heard it kind of peel up and it sounded sticky. But yeah, but that was the, the paint I'm trying to hold on to my paper. Okay. I'm going to push this down in place. And if I just follow suit all the way along, it should work out just fine. I'm just going to check real quick if you guys don't mind. I want to see if anybody, Hey, Denise Winton, I see you. She says, I'm sheer, just busy making wood ornaments. Um, with acrylic on top, but doing an acrylic tonight. Thank you, Benita. She says, pretty papers. Hi from Texas, Miss Barbara. She's loving the books. Yay, I'm so glad. Oh, now finally, finally, StreamYard has caught up with the comments. Now I can see all your comments. Katana says, I love how you encourage everyone. Oh, you're welcome for that, Katana. It's it like it gets me so excited to get you guys excited and to inspire you to do more, do do more things, have more fun, enjoy the process more. Um, yes. OK, thank you, Shauna. You guys saying feel better. Prayers for a headache to leave you. Right, Benita? Oh, goodness. Ina says, I know I won't get my Christmas journals done, but I was thinking ahead um, to live books for Valentine's Day. Oh, good for you. You're already thinking Valentine's Day. Good grief. I got to get Christmas going for my family here. Connie says, I'm so far behind on my products, but I have been concentrating on my craft market being held this Saturday. And then I can get busy with projects for the holidays. Good, Connie. So, you know, you know, this is my goal. I got to get this done on Saturday. And then after that, you can follow through. That's kind of how I feel. Got to get the work stuff done. Then we'll follow through with family stuff. I've been kind of on a baking mode though. I made those peanut butter or rice crispy treats last night. Did you see that post? I did make them. So my family has been enjoying those. I have been too. I've had a couple. I'm not going to lie. I take like a little sliver here or there and then it ends up like, Grace, you had way too much of that. <laughs> Why do we do that to ourselves? But they are good. I've been kind of in a little bit of a baking mode. I don't know why. I think when the weather turns, I get feeling like I should be baking something. It warms the house up. And this is why too, I asked you guys about the tea. I don't generally drink hot tea a whole lot in the, in the summer. I mean, it's just not even on my mind, but when winter comes and the house is colder, like day to night, it's just colder here in North Dakota. I mean, it was high of 19 degrees today and a low of one degree. It's colder. So I tend to like want to drink hot all day and I cannot afford to drink hot coffee all day. I can't do it. So I drink herbal tea throughout the, and I can't do hot cocoa. I can't afford the calories of a hot cocoa. Although I love it. I love my coffee too, but I can't afford to do that. So I drink hot tea, herbal tea throughout the day to keep myself warm. And so I was asking you guys, I put a post in the groups and here on the page because I'm really serious. I need more suggestions. You guys have come up with some really good suggestions for herbal teas to try. So thank you for that. Thanks for sharing, for helping a sister out. All right. This is going to be so gorgeous as a book, you guys. 
cover is going to be done. This book, we're going to have to do a little decorating to and jazzing it up. But this one with this gorgeous paper, it's going to be all done. Be very careful. Like I said, this is a little bit damp or moist because the glue, even though I put it underneath, it's starting to seep through the paper. So be very careful when you're working on your project to make a judgment call, like feel it, make sure there's nothing really wet. I'm going to put it down. My surface here, my table surface, it is a, it's a right, like you can draw, use dry erase markers on this and write and, and erase it. It's like a plastic covering. Um, that might be hard for you to see, but it is plastic and wipeable. So I don't think that this will stick to it. It's not like a, a wood surface and it's not paper. It's not a tablecloth. It's a plastic covering. And so I don't think even if mine was a little bit damp, I don't think it would stick too badly. It, I think it'll come off just fine. So you be careful when you do yours at home. Like if you see me do this, it may not work for you on your table surface. Just be careful. But your, if your table surface is different than mine, I don't want your book to stick. You might have to wait for that side to dry or to force it to dry before you go on to this second side. But mine, I think I can put it down safely onto my plastic table covering and be safe. All right. So now we're just going to place this down and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to coat the outside of this. I don't know about this book. If I'll add anything to it, we'll see. I got some new cool embellishments. Um, look at how easy that is. Rice papers are so easy to work with. Let me get this um, Katana's little sweet comment here off the screen so you can see the whole so easy breezy lemon squeezy we're gonna let this sit and settle because we're gonna want to put a top coat on it for sure and i don't even know i probably will put oh i guess we do have to i do want to cover this because of the ugly stickers you know they they use this really massive tape not i keep saying sticker it's tape to tape down the cover of this book i'll show you the covers are in the garbage, but the library book covers for these books, they use this massive tape that it actually tore off parts of the inside part of the book and on the outside of the book. Um, so I'm going to cover this with something pretty, I think, and then I'm going to leave this side. So anyway, we're going to put this aside and let it dry some more. We'll just put it right here and let's grab onto this one. Come on over here, pretty. And let's see about... We put the varnish on this side. It's still a little damp, but let's get the varnish on this side and then we'll air dry, we'll air dry some of this so that we can get moving with the next part, which will be sanding off. And then actually while it's drying, we can get our Santa prepped. We'll put this other coat of varnish on here and then we'll get the Santa prepped for the front of this book. I might run out of this. I can't believe it. It might just get me through these two books and that'll be it. Uh oh, I have, I have bottles in my office where I fill orders from. So I have bottles in the inventory. I just don't have a bottle here. I have silky shine version. I'm using the mat now. I have the glitter. I have the silky shine. <laughs> I have other ones here. But this particular bottle, when I run out, I'm going to have to go to my office to get a new one. I feel like I just need more right here. It's not thick enough. Okay. We're going to put this aside, let it dry, and then let's work on what's going to go on the front of this. I just want to make sure I hit these ends. And I need a drink of water. Real quick while I check comments. Joy, I showed, she's asking, will you have more holiday rice papers? Um, this one is new. It's going to be in the shop tomorrow, this rice paper. And I just, I there's a couple of new ones that I got today. I just showed them at the beginning of this, Joy. So if you just came on, 
um, for anybody just coming on. You could watch the replay to see them again, but yes, they will be in the store tomorrow morning. I'll get them, I'll get them up in the store because I just got another batch of them today. So yes, yes. All right, let me check comments because I feel like I'm behind. Barbara says, hi from Texas. Hello, Southern friend. Poor Denise says she's just busy. <laughs> just busy. I know, burr, right, Sean? Woohoo, burr. Sean is coffee dying at the moment to have her own and to have her oven on. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Get, that's a good way to do it. No calories in coffee dyeing paper. <laughs> Shauna. Um, I know. I know. Kim says, I, I love how you can pin a comment for everyone to see, but it covers up the project. I'm trying to be very mindful of it, so I don't keep it on there for long. Christine has been drinking matcha tea with sugar-free vanilla. Sugar-free vanilla, is it like a creamer? Green tea is an acquired taste for me, you guys. I'm not like, the first time I had it, I was like, mm, not so sure about that. But I have been drinking it more and trying to acquire a taste for it. Lori says any green tea. She doesn't care what brand it is. <laughs> oh, thanks, Shauna. She said, I'm loving this. I'm fluffing us. I'm really loving this paper. Why, thank you. Mary says, I love to hear you talk about the process. When I was teaching preschool, I always talked to parents. The art projects we did were about process, not about outcomes. Exactly, Mary. You're so right. The projects were about learning how to move paint or use supplies. If we had broccoli for a snack, we would do, we would use broccoli to paint with. Oh my gosh, that would be fun. I love it. I love it. Um, Ina, to get to my website, you simply go to Google or Yahoo or Safari or whichever, um, browser you use and type in the comfy nest with grace.com that's my website address and then go to the shop now i use <laughs> vicky wants to use zoom wants to know do i use a keurig for my tea i don't I, in fact we don't even have a keurig anymore mine was breaking i got rid of it went to it like a like a regular pot coffee pot it, it has a single option but it, i'm basically making pots of coffee again um but no i use a teapot I use a tea kettle on the stove and heat my, my water and then the old fashioned way with my gas stove. You're welcome, Joy. Ginger peach tea from the, Rep that sounds good. I would like those flavors together. <gasps> Shauna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna remember that tomorrow. Ginger peach tea from the Republic of Teas. Phyllis is a huge fan of the rice papers. Why, well, thank you, my friend. Oh, it's a syrup. Her vanilla is a syrup. I can't do anything tea, hot or cold. Kimberly just doesn't like it. <laughs> I, my, my taste for tea. Oh, ginger lemon. Luann. You have a teapot also, Vicki. Um, listen, when, before I had my kids, you guys, um, I my, my actually my wedding shower, my sisters for me, took me to a tea room in Boston. Um, it was actually a hotel that was heavy. They had afternoon tea. That was my wedding shower. It was lovely. And I collected teapots at the time and teacups. So I have a, a nice collection of teapots and teacups. But at the time, I was drinking a lots of different flavored teas and floral teas. And after I had my kids, I am not a fan of floral teas anymore. I feel like it's like the green tea, like I would have to acquire. It's the weirdest thing. The, the, the teas that I drank before I had my kids, before I gave birth to my children, I, my tastes have just changed. I don't know why, but that's hot. That's just what it is. <laughs> Maureen uses a kettle to make hot tea. Me too. The old fashioned way. Oh, Vicki says in June, 2023, listen to this, you guys, I'm putting hers up on the screen. In June, 2023, we're going to have a tea party when the King of England is crowned. <gasps> I want to come Vicki. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh yes. That sounds fun. I mean, I have the teapots with the tea covers and the loose tea and the, the cups. I just love it so much. Um, Jeannie, this pretty tissue paper is the paper I was telling the girls earlier. 
this is the paper that when you place an order from me now, right now during the holiday season, I've been wrapping things in this paper that need to get wrapped. Lauren says, I love the Bigelow tea. Bengal, Bengal spice and stash ginger lemon Kim likes. Oh my gosh. You guys have got to answer the question in the groups or there's a post here on the page with those suggestions because that's where I'll go to find all of your suggestions. When I'm looking for tea to buy, um, I just bought, let's grab the Santa. This is the Santa I think I'm going to put on the cover. I'm going to rip him down to size. Uh, I'm going to rip him a little bit bigger actually for now until I decide what I'm doing here because I'm super visual. So let's get this paper ripped down. I did put him on like a thicker it's not, would it be considered cardstock? I had this thick paper on hand, thicker weighted paper than regular printer paper. And I printed them out before I went live. Oh man, I actually printed another couple of Santas out as options and I forgot them in my printer. So I guess this vintage Santa is the one. <laughs> I thought I'm gonna rip it a little bit bigger than the picture just for now, because I think I'm going to like layer him a couple of times. He's going to go on this cover. But I think I'm going to layer him a couple of times and distress the edges of this. So what I have to decide is do I want to keep the white or do I want to get rid of all the white and rip right into the color of the image? That's what I'm trying to decide as I'm looking at it. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer, really. It's just what is your personal preference? It's it's like, should you wear a blue dress or a red dress today? They're both beautiful girls. Don't worry about it. Just pick one and <laughs> just go with it. These kinds of decisions are the same thing to me. I There's no right or wrong. It's just, what do you feel like doing today? Um, so I just got this paper in the mail today. It's handmade paper. It's really thick and look at the edges. I ordered it and I just got it today. It's gorgeous, you guys. Wouldn't this be fun to frame this? It would make it more vintagey. I just don't, it might be a little too dark. It might be just a little too dark. I'm gonna grab some other cardstock. It might be a little bit too, cause this is so white. My, this paper is so white. This matches, but when I come in with this really dark stained, it's gorgeous, this paper. I'm like, I'm still loving it, but I think it's too dark. I'm going to grab some regular cardstock and see about picking a different color to frame that in. Um, Shauna says, I use a tea kettle, but I generally prefer iced tea and coffees. Oh, even in the winter, Shauna, you still drink the iced stuff? I don't know. It's so weird. Shana says, I switched to YouTube and I have sound back. Goofy. She lost sound, but she's back on YouTube and she found the sound. Oh, gosh. Vicky says, my son bought me teapots and cups from England on one of his trips. What a good son. Oh, Christina, see, your, your tastes change, don't you think? She said, since I've been drinking... Green tea, she can't go back to black tea. I'm looking for, you guys, I'm over here looking for paper. I'm looking for a cardstock paper that would make sense for, for a background. And I don't think I want anything real frilly. I know I went off camera. You know, it's the big no-no what not to do, but I'm right here. It's just, you can only fit so much in the camera. Um, I have this paper that one of you sent me and it has like dots on it that are raised up and they're silver, they're foiled. That might be really cute. So there's, we can go a couple of different ways with this. We can go really, really rustic or we can go really um, just bright white instead. Oh, I'm trying to decide. I, I need to use sweetener on my teas and coffees. I do too, Lori. I do too. There was a long time where I wasn't putting any sweetener in my coffee and I'm trying to get back to that. And I just put a little bit less every day until it's basically gone. Um, just because it's getting your taste buds used to it without the sweetener. That's the thing. 
Um, it's really hard to just cold turkey take the sweetener out. But yes, it's, it is good, especially if you drink a lot of hot tea and coffee. It would be important not to have a tablespoon of honey or sweetener in every single cup because then, you know, it adds up really fast for middle-aged girls like me. <laughs> I can't afford that. Framing the Santa in green would be pretty. I'm thinking something, right? I'm thinking something. we got to find something. Brown would be good, too. Like, I just, I would have to muck up this if I made, if I introduced, like, this brown color because this background is so bright white. That's my feeling, anyway. All right, I have these, and these, they can either, this is like a cranberry red. That might work really well. That I like, you guys. That I like a lot. And uh, I tend to rip all my edges. So I don't have to, but that's what I tend to do. I'm going to rip a little bit more of this white off. So it's not so bold. Take a little bit more of this white paper off. Get a little bit closer to that image. And then if I have a red distress pad, I do you guys, crazily enough, I have this one called Plum. Maybe I could just distress that in Plum. What do you think? Let's do it on a wide part. Let's just, yes, 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 this is what we're going to do. I think that'll look good. Okay. Made a decision. I'm going to put this down here. It's a little more leverage and it's feeling dry. I think I need to buy re-inkers for all of my, my little ink pad feels a little dry. So I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water to reactivate that color and get it to release for me. But I think I need to get re-inkers for all of my things, you guys. I have to do, I have to do a little test. It's like, you know, when you have markers for a long, long time and every once in a while, you got to take all the markers out, open them all up, put them on a piece of paper and see if they still work. I have to do that with all my ink pads. They've been around for a long time. So do you think I should rip the red paper or just cut it square? What would you do? I think I want a little bit less of this white right here. I'm going to tear it down a little closer to the photo. Yeah. Same thing up here. I have a little bit. I feel like it's just a little bit too much white. I want a little bit of it peaking. Not that much. Rip it. Joy says do it square. Jeannie says rip all the paper. Great idea to distress it with the plum. It just is perfect. It matches so perfectly. Are you kidding me with this? Oh, I can't decide. Do we rip it or go square? What Joyce, what Joyce says square. Jo Joy says square. Joyce says rip it. Christina says rip it. What do you guys think? Uh, help me decide. Let me grab my chair again. Connie says rip it. I have more papers. So if I rip one and we don't like it, we, we can always go back to... The non-ripped one. I could I could just cut another square with all the rips. So that's a good thing. It's only paper. And paper's not expensive to play with this way. Um, before I do anything else, if this is dry, I'm going to get this fully ready because I'm so visual. I want to be able to see this on here so I know what I'm, I'm working with. So I'm just going to come around and sandpaper this. Or rip it. It's coming off very easily. And that's because I varnished it. So it's not hard to get this to release at all. It is a lot easier, though. I'm going to hang it off the edge of my table to get the leverage. If you've seen me do this before, it makes it a lot faster. 
I got that whole edge done in that little bit of time. It's just a lot faster. If you put it down on your table, I put my hand here to leverage it and to get it like really solid, but I have the end of the book hanging off the end of the table and it just makes it really easy to get that to release. So the edges are gonna be a little rough and that's okay. I probably, we could distress the edges of the cover too. But let's get the paper off first and then we'll be able to decide what to do. You definitely do not want to sand until your glue and your top coat are dry. Don't do it while it's wet. All right. Here's my cute little book. Where's our cupboard? That's the back. There's the front. This paper matches exactly. It's actually crazy. But you see, if I just put the Santa on there, he gets kind of lost. So I do think we need this little buffer of red in between. I don't think we need this anymore. That's going to make a noise, but I'm going to put that aside. It might, it might just slip down off the way I propped it up. Okay, let's... Sometimes what I do is I just put this in two corners, like in this corner and that corner, instead of doing the whole thing. Here's what I'm gonna do. I haven't decided yet, but I've cut it big enough so that I can kind of visualize. I think I need it torn, you guys. There's there's no, like, nobody's the boss of you <laughs> when you do this. And I always say, girl, you do you. Like, if you really, really like it solid, then do it solid. If you really, really like it ripped, then do it ripped. Um, there's no, there's nobody's the boss of you. I'm going to rip it. If you turn Santa, you could rip it. And if you don't like it, you have the other side. I'm not sure what that means, Kimberly. I must have missed something there. Good night, Christina. Listen, I have um, like four or five more of the, these sheets of paper. So I'm not worried. I mean, I, if, if I change my mind, we can always grab another sheet of paper. I'm going to see if it's maybe a little easier to do this with my rip ruler. Yeah, I don't need that much around him. I just want a little bit of a, a border around him. I might have to add some shimmer here. <gasps> I'm feeling like we should put a little glisten in his eye or in his lantern or something. Shouldn't he have a little shimmer on him? Santa can't, he can't be going around without any shimmer. I want this to be about right there. When you get a really scrawny piece that you're trying, like a really thin piece that you're trying to rip, it does get more challenging with a ruler. I will admit. Okay, let's hit the edges of this. So the parts that I tore toward myself that are white, so they're not white, so that they're edged out in this same plum. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. The way I had the paper positioned. Gotcha. Of course, some glitter, Nancy. <laughs> what Santa scene? What, I mean, even a vintage Santa, there's got to be a little glistening somewhere. Where would you put it on this scene? Where should we, what should we glitter? And now that I have my little plum distress ink out, I'm also thinking maybe I should, um, look at doing the edges of the book too. Let me, let me take a peek at the book. We'll finish this and then we'll take a peek at the book. This is darkening up the edges of this. Um, I'm trying to see it so that you can see this. 
it is making the, the edges of this darker than the paper, which is good because I want it to match the Santa. And I want it to look kind of burnt and edged out and old and decrepit. I want it to look old. Okay, this is perfection. For here, right? It's perfect because now the the focal point here is not the poinsettia. The poinsettia is really the background and the back of the book, which is very Christmassy. So if you have this propped up on a mantle and it happens to be that this end is exposed, it'll still be decorative and pretty. But if you put it down on a coffee table as a decorative piece and he's popped up like this, very decorative and pretty, even from the side, um, you could use it as a journal. You could use it as a journal for your 2022 Christmas season. He fits on there just perfectly, absolutely perfectly. But I think I do have to add some shimmer and let's just see about, what is this gonna do if I, yes, we're gonna edge out the cover. Instead of having the blue show through, we're gonna put the wine on these edges. Plum, it's, excuse me, it's called plum, the color. So I'm just gonna hit these edges with some plum. So it's all matchy matchy. <laughs> the inside is still blue, but I'm okay with that, that little edge being blue. We're getting this out, these outside edges to really be coordinated. There. And you can pull this in. If you want this color to come in, it actually might be nice to get it to come in on the paper a little bit too, on the outside of the paper so that that even looks a little distressed instead of just hitting those edges. Let's go around and get just a little bit into the poinsettia paper. Now, originally, wait, let's make sure I have the, this the front of my book. Originally for this one, I had pulled out this little embellishment. It's a huge, it's like a little door handle. Um, let me find something white that I can put it on so you can see it better, like a white background. It's like a little door handle, but it's a big, huge brad. So if I got it on the front of the book, wouldn't that be cute? Like you would open the book with this little, this little knobby, like door handle. I was thinking about putting this right here so that it's like a little pull, like a drawer pull almost. Can you see what that is? So it has a little ring on it and a decorative, like that would be the like a drawer pull. But the back of it is a brad, just like you would just split that. I'd have to punch a hole in the book and then split it on this side. I think it could be really cute. Let's get this thing glued down. Actually, I'm gonna use my glue stick. I'm going to make sure I get these edges. Sometimes I like my edges to stick out and be have some movement. And sometimes I want them real flat down. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you like. On the front of a book, I normally try to be flat. Because if the book gets slid into a bookshelf against other books, I don't want the edges getting caught and ripped. That's usually my thought on the cover of a book. So I usually try to get those those edges really secured down strongly. So if I put this here, what do we think about the little pull? Yay or nay to the pull? 
it would be right there. This little like coppery pull. <laughs> what do you think about it? You like the Brad door pull? I don't know what else to call it, girls. <laughs> you like the doorknob baths? Cherokee says, yes, go for it. Hey, Cherokee. Yes, for the pull, Phyllis says. Oh, and so Katana, everybody's saying she's loving it. Loving it, loving it. Love the idea of the pull. It would definitely make it a little harder if you're going to put this book um, into, you know, slide it in against other books, but it could be really beautiful. I'm going to have to put this down first because then I'm going to have to poke my hole. It's probably going to even go through this paper. So let's get this secured down first. And actually for this, I think I'm going to use a different glue because I want to really make sure this stays down. I don't want it coming up for anything. So let's use some art glitter glue and really get these edges really well. I'm going to try to get close to the edges again so they're not sticking up. Most of the time I like these to have a lot of movement, but on the cover of a book, not so much. Okay, so we got those edges, but now we want to get, it's like, it's like frosting a cake. We want to get some glue throughout the middle here. Like my pretty designs. It's like somebody skating on an ice rink. Just doing little circles on an ice rink. Gotta do it. Kathy says we gotta do it. All right. Very important. Make sure you're right side up here. And that Santa is going to be right side up. I'm going to center this. And I'm moving this just a little bit over. So that we have room for the pole. Oh my gosh, I love it so much, you guys. And this one, I don't have to do anything to the inside cover. It's just so perfect. It's in such beautiful shape. It's just perfect. Here, I need to punch a hole. I'm going to need to use my crocodile. My hefty, hefty hole puncher. Um, and I better mark where I want it before I do it because leave it to me. I probably would put it in the wrong place. Let me cover my glue. Good night, Marsha. Connie loves the pull. Jace loves the pull. Okay, let's do it, girls. Let us do it. I want it to land. And actually, you guys, this comes out. That came right out. And this has the hole in it. You can see that hole. So if I can figure out where I want it, I probably could mark my hole with a pencil. So, excuse my head. If my head gets in the camera, I don't mean for it to. You guys, I don't usually measure a stinking thing, but I think I would be irritated if I was way off here. <laughs> it's eight and a half. So four and a quarter would be halfway point. Four and a quarter, the hole at a four and a quarter would be the halfway point. It looks a little low to me, but you know, a door handle, if we thought of it like a door handle, a door handle wouldn't be on the higher end, it would be on the lower end. I'm gonna put a little circle right there with my pencil. That's perfect because it helps me um, with placement when I do this. I just need to poke a hole and the hole, I think I can use the smaller hole punch. So we're just gonna stick our book in here and I'm gonna put that pencil mark right where my hole punch is. And if I need to, I can always go back and add a bigger hole this thing cuts through anything like butter. So there's my hole right there, established very well. Now I can put this thing back together. This was quite surprising actually and, and helpful that it came apart like that. So now I can stick this through here. Hopefully it fits. Yep, it fits perfectly. And then Oh, 
we're going to open these up and I'm going to leave this. You could, you could glue these down. Um, you could put a sticker on them, but I think I'm going to leave it. Like what if just in case somebody ever wants to get that off of there for some reason and do something different with it, you know, I could glue them, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it. But look at how cute with the little pull. Oh, that's so cute, you guys. I'm loving this book. Now tell me, decorative book for the coffee table, or is this? would this be a good art journal? What do you think? I'm going to grab the other book now so we can see where we are with the other one. Where are you? It's still drying. Decorative or art journal? Here's our other guy. Look, at, I don't even know, like, I don't feel like there's anything I need to do to this one. The only thing I did think, okay, so this is like you have to, oh, the inside covers. I need to do the inside covers. And the only other thing I thought is if this was an art journal, you may want a tie for it to hold it closed because your papers will start to get crinkly and warped and full. Um, but if it's just decorative, you might not want a tie on it. But at the very least for this one, let's get this covered with something. And like you could do something as simple as this it matches very well. It like matches perfectly. Just glue down a, like a regular piece. And I'm just gonna do the inside cover because I don't wanna lose my library card. I just wanna cover up this mess from the tape. You know, the tape ripped the inside up a little bit when I tore off the cover. So like we could just put this, keep it really simple. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, let's just see if there's a different color that we might like better. In this pack, there isn't for sure. That's the only color that will work. And it's like a cranberry red, so it will work perfectly. I'm going to get out my, excuse the drawer opening and closing. I'm going to get this out so I can get an actual, like, perfect cut so that it fits perfectly. So we need it to be five and a quarter. Let me check comments. I feel like I'm behind. The pull is so cool, right, Stephanie? In my Amazon store, girls. What did I say? Five and a quarter by eight and a quarter is what I need. Fabulous. It looks like a small box. Joy says the handle makes it look like a small box. When someone opens it, they realize it's a book. It's so cute. That would make a great little gift, right? When I got these things from Amazon this week, I thought, they're too big. They're just too big. This is never going to work, but no, they're perfect. Okay. I need five and a quarter by, what did I say? Eight and a quarter. Oh, that side's really crooked. I better cut this side off. Five and a quarter. Holy, I'm just going to make it. Cutting a sliver off that. Five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Should be the right size. And then I'll do another one of those for the other side of this. See, it matches, it matches the bows perfectly and the packages perfectly. Yep, that's gonna get glued right there and cover up. I could have gone just a smidge bigger than five and a quarter, but if I do it exactly right, none of that yellow is gonna show. Okay, so let's just glue this down. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side just to cover up this icky tape. Uh-oh, went a little far with my glue. It's okay. Any oozing glue, we just use a clean paper towel, shop towel to get it off. I know I need to cover all the yellow, so I want to get that yellow. And I use the nozzle of my glue bottle I don't want bubbles of glue. I want it to be really flat on here. So either use a paintbrush and smooth out your glue or use your nozzle or use your finger. You do not want to see these bumps and you will see it through the paper. If you don't smooth out this glue, this tacky glue is thick enough that it will stay bumped like that. It'll show these streaks just the way they are if you don't smooth it out. 
Now, I don't have to have the whole darn thing covered, but a good portion of it. And like I said, if you leave um, like a, like a, that, you will see that. You will see that. See how it's all raised up and high? It will show right through your solid paper. So you need to make sure that you're spreading that out. Most people will use a paintbrush, but you know me, I just use my fingers. I just use my fingers. Sometimes I use my, the nozzle of my blue bottle to really spread that out. Because I do not want it to have that raised up look. So what works really well is just a wet paintbrush to spread that glue and make sure you don't have any bumps. Okay, tip, tip for you. All right, we gotta get this in here exactly right. And um, any oozing glue, if you're using an art glue, it will dry clear. So we shouldn't, if anything oozes out of here, it should dry clear. And we can decorate this. I mean, you could, you could put, you could print something out and put it on here, like another image of Santa, or you could use it for a writing page and put lined paper on there and write something on there. But we're just going to cover that up. And that's much better looking than having the tape. And the tape is actually still sticky. So we, we definitely need to cover that. Let's go on the other side. One more piece of this. And we have to decide on some, do I want to put some glitter on my Santa? Do I want to? Eight and a quarter. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Eight and a quarter by, what did I say? Five and a quarter. And I thought I could go just a tish bigger. So I'm trying to go just a tish bigger on both of those cuts. Oh my gosh, I have a pile of stuff very precariously piled next to me. So if you hear a big crash, boom, bang, it's, it wouldn't surprise me. Perfection. Perfection. Let me check comments again. I feel like I'm missing all your comments. A crips, you would use it as a Christmas art journal, Vicky says. Yeah, it, it's pretty just anyway, right? It doesn't matter, Shauna, how you use it. It will end up, she said, I think it's a good book to sell. I will not be keeping these, Holly. You're hilarious. I'm going to put your comment up there. It's a good book to sell with her little laugh emoji. These will end up in one of my auctions. Art journal for both. What a wonderful idea. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Cherokee. Good night, Katana. Oh, fun idea, Judy. She said a Christmas journal to add to year to year. A decorative art journal for the coffee table. Yes, Kimberly, fill it up. And then you could use it as a decorative art journal for sure. Okay, I'm going to grab my other glue, this book glue is a lot thinner. It's just really easy to spread compared to the tacky glue. So I'm going to grab that, you guys. And I am going to grab, I'm just going to use the same paintbrush I was using on my decoupage medium to spread this glue. I think I'm usually clogged. <laughs> I'm squeezing. Nothing's coming out. That's the only thing about this bottle. It gets clogged easily. The little nozzle that it's supposed to pour out from gets clogged. So I end up doing this. See how much thinner it is? It's just easier to spread. So when you're trying in a book to get flat coverage, I could have probably used my Pentart here too, but the Pentart is even thinner than this. And I knew that this would do the trick or the tacky glue. So I will save my decoupage glue for decoupaging and use the less expensive glue for gluing. But you could have, and you could have used Mod Podge here. Mod Podge would work perfectly well for doing this. I don't even reach for Mod Podge very much anymore. I only ever use it when I'm ironing on, when I use the iron on method for decoupage. 
that's almost oh no that's not true because i do use it as a um as a top coat as well i love it as a top coat i love their spray their matte spray and their glossy spray okay before i like really push it down i want to make sure my edges are straight and they are okay here we go so i'm gonna pick up this side it helps this whole thing lay down on the table flatter did i miss a corner girls nope if you leave it alone gracie it'll be just fine okay there's nothing wet here that's exposed on my hand so i'm not afraid to close the book you want to make sure that you have no wet edges before you go closing a book after you've glued something down. Otherwise your pages are gonna to stick together, but that looks much better. This, um, this one, I am going to put Mod Podge on the outside of. I'm gonna put a couple of coats of Mod Podge matte on here. It'll leave a nice like satin sheen on it. Um, and it'll really make sure that the paper is really glued down. I won't make you watch me do that. But then this one's ready to go. Now this one, I don't, I don't, I, I think I want to put a little bit of sparkle somewhere on here, but I haven't decided where yet. Um, on your art journals, do you add blank papers to the pages for journaling? I glue pages together in a book like this. If I'm going to art journal in it, I would glue like four pages together, maybe five pages together, and then use use that, you know, to do an art journal on. Do, do an art journal spread because you want thick pages. <laughs> Shauna says, yeah, auction. <laughs> Good night, Connie. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, Cheryl Rojas. It's good to see you. The bottom are the beard. I was thinking the lantern or maybe just even his hat. Should we add some stickles to his hat? I have some red sparkle, you know, sparkly stickles. You know, that lighting isn't great for you guys to see that. I'm gonna have to work on that. So I have some red and I also have, um, I could put that red on the berries for sure on his hat. Let's just add just a tiny dot of red. Okay, it's not coming down. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm just going to add a tiny dot of red to the berries on his hat. And then maybe I was thinking a twinkle in his eye would be cute. If I use one of the clear or the gold. I could outline this hat, but I think it would be too much. I did the berries and I did it in a way so that when I picked it up, it left like, like a little bump. So it looks like a berry. Can you see them here? So it's a little bit more 3D. And then I have, there are two different clears. Um, do I have both of them here? Let's see. I have, I don't have both of the clears that are on my site here with me, but I have one of them. This is called Stardust, but it has like a rainbow colored sparkle to it. Very subtle. I have gold and I have silver. I don't think the silver would fit anywhere, especially with this bronze door handle, but maybe the gold, I'm thinking of the lantern or just a twinkle in his eye. I'm gonna put a twinkle in his eye and I'm gonna do it with a clear. I'm gonna take a little bit of the stardust color. It's called stardust. And we're just gonna put a little twinkle in the corner of his eye. It's gonna feel like I'm putting makeup on Santa. Santa, you need just a little, yep, it's like this, the tiniest bit of clear sparkle on the whites of his eye. Oh my Lord, that was perfect. You guys, I don't know that you're going to be able to see this, but it's just stinking perfect. 
Santa has a twinkle in his eye. Okay, you can see it. Look when I do that. It actually looks a little creepy. <laughs> That's what I did. I put sparkle in his eye. So he has a twinkle in his eye, and he has a twinkle just on the berries of his hat. Those are the only two places. This door handle is fabulous. This I need to let it dry completely, um, especially the stickles. But that's what we accomplished tonight. We got two altered books done. I could try to um, zoom you in so you could see them better, but I think by holding them up, you've got a good, nice, good view of them. <laughs> Lisa, it looked a little creepy, just a little creepy, but it is nice. You can see the sparkle in his eye, which, you know, isn't that the way the story goes with the twinkle in his eye? I love it. I love it. You're laughing with me? <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, I was thinking the lantern might be pretty with some gold too, but I kind of like just having that little bit of sparkle in his creepy little eye. All right, we're not on Halloween anymore. I shouldn't use the word creepy. But look at it, it looks 3D. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. I, I do I do wildly entertain myself. To, I mean, it's true. I sit here by myself and I giggle sometimes, you guys. I am, I entertain myself for sure. All right. So we did it girls. We did it. Okay. So remember Bab says, I love them both. We'll have to order paper in the morning. Yes. Yeah, so in the morning, give me some time in the morning, see the kids off to school. And then I'm going to get these papers, these new rice papers and the restock of the ones that have sold out the Christmas ones that have sold out. I'll get them up on the, um, on the website. Um, this is like, you know, we just have some new ones that are available. So that'll be fun to get those up on the website available for shopping. Um, don't forget, you can get the glues. If you go into the decoupage section of a shop, you can grab the glues too. That's the other thing that is in stock. Uh, what else? Oh, the last thing I wanted to remind you is that because of the wrestling season, so my son wrestling, um, Tuesday night late night crafting is not a given every week for the, for the next couple of months because of that, because wrestling duels sometimes are on Tuesdays. So I've already created events for this month. Um, like I think next week we're on Wednesday night, not Tuesday night. So watch the events tab here on the page at the company nest with grace to know when I'm going live or join the telegram channel. Um, get on the telegram channel to make sure that you you can um, get the, the messages for when those are. So you can join me next time. I would love to have your company. I'm so glad you guys love the books. Good night, Miss Missy. <laughs> Good night. I'm so glad you had fun. Good night, Phyllis. Ah, thank you, Alisa. She said your hair looks nice. Why, thank you, my sweet friend. Okay, thanks, Christy. I appreciate it. She said that was wonderful. I hope you enjoyed watching them come together. Thanks for being here with me, you guys. Have a beautiful, blessed night. Go make something pretty that brings your heart joy. Bye.